Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. My name is Chana. With me, as always, we've got Mr. Joe Intel. Happy Monday, everybody. What is going on? Ha! Oh, oh no. no! He made it! Oh, he, no. made it. <laughs> he made it! He made it! <laughs> What's oh, no. up? And with, with us is, is and joining via satellite from via satellite. <laughs> the moon <laughs> is Aaron. <laughs> oh, what I'm is sweaty. that? I'm oh. sweating, dude. Okay. I was hey. sweating to the oldies. Hey, are you were you were you serious that you could curl 50? Yeah, man. No joke. No joke, man. Today I was like, I don't know, dude. Heavy, I was feeling though. like that's a heavy no. A well, so 50? to be fair though, I only did one set of nine, right? So I couldn't do another set like that. I tried 50 on the next set and I did like maybe three or four and then had to step down to 45, but then quickly stepped down to 40. I was just like, I but I was excited, that's man, because I've never been able to do that. Like every time that I feel like I'm getting stronger in my life, something's happened where I've got injured. Like I remember the best shape I was ever in. Uh-huh. I was like 20 mm-hmm. and uh, then I separated Mr. my shoulder. So Mr. Potato Head, that's what you Yeah, that's right. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just to be clear, clear. you're talking about uh, <laughs> a single 50 per arm? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't, want, I didn't want you to be like, oh, on the curl bar. Like a 50. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I well, I mean, technically. No. A little different. I was excited, man. I even texted my girlfriend. I was like, guess what I did? She's like, that's cool. Are you happy? And I was like, yep, I'm super nerd right now, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway. She was like, she was not about it. She's like, why are you calling me with this? She's like, what? <laughs> she used to work next, at the gym back the in the day. Thing, so. The next thing in audio is going to be, you know, like the discussion will be like, Aaron, is he natty or not? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about because I watched that guy's channel. Natty or not? <laughs> you talking about Greg yeah. Doucette? Coach Greg? Yeah. Uh, yeah there's a guy, few guys. You know, there's that a guy's awesome. Guys, yeah. yeah, there's a few guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's my lunch, no man. Yeah, there's so much stuff I had to do today, and I won't, I won't get into all that. But, hey, what's up, Rev? Bro, you eat Good when mark. you got to eat, man. Don't let nobody tell you no different. Billy P., Daniel Miller in the house. True voice of reason. Angela Jude. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by. You see, we got a new member also. Brand new. Oh, that's right. Reverend Slim. Reverend Slim. Oh, Revelance. man. I can't even talk right now. Bro. It's because you got a lot of food in your mouth. <clears throat> At least it's food. Only food. All right. Y'all Ooh. remember the uh, Callies? Yes. A little. What are these? LP? LP UNF? Yes. LP UNF. Yeah. Good speakers? All right. Yes. So then, I just got in to, to test. I just finished testing them last night, actually. These uh, Neumann. K- oh, oh, oh. Hold on nice, a second. Dude. Hold on. But they're like, let me see if I can do two at a time. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> yep, immediately. <laughs> we'll do them sideways. <laughs> Neumann. Shut up, Jonna. <laughs> oh, oh man, that thing's tiny. So oh, man, now the guy who sent the, 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 like the Neumann to me is like, look what you're doing. It's like on. you ruined it. Let's pretend I'm not a patron and I don't know, so I won't say. But I mean, they're good. They're really Neumann. good. Like they are meant as a near field monitor, and like most near field monitors, they uh because it has such good constant directivity and the high frequency, meaning like the radiation, the horizontal dispersion is so constant. What mm-hmm. happens is as you get further and further away, those reflections are reinforced. Like that sound is reinforced by the reflections. So as you get further away from the speaker and the room is involved more, you start to hear more of those reflections. So you can have a higher frequency treble bump than you would really want than if you were right up close and there was hardly any reflection. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just because of the, the, the sound that's going out to the side is so similar to the sound that's coming directly at you that all of those sounds basically just start stacking up on top of each other in the high frequency. I guess that's like the best way I can explain it. So you wind Mm. up with like kind of, it starts to tilt down in the mid range and then it just starts to flatten off at the top. But so many desktop, like near fill monitors have that, that it's normal, but that's the only downside of these kind of speakers is that if you, if you sit too far away, like say maybe further than a couple meters and, or you have a, pretty reflective room like you've got them close to nearby side walls then mm-hmm. they can come off a little bit hot but you can eq it down right you could bring that down if you want to yeah 
Yeah, maybe that's why people don't like uh, studio monitors. You know, for they're like, oh, it sounds too clinical. Maybe it's kind of like what you're describing there. Could be, man. Yeah, it actually could be that. I the reason I don't like studio monitors for far field listening is so many of them incorporate that limiter. Right. You know, so the bass is just limited as you get higher in volume. And I'm like, dude, where'd the bass go? Like, oh, I would rather have the distortion than no bass, up, at least up to a point, right? I thought it was because you're going to say because you want to include your own tube amps. Oh. <laughs> you know I what do. I mean? You want the choice to be able to throw in, you know, uh, some Dayton Audio tube amps or something like that. I don't know. Definitely. I definitely do, do want to do that. I was just playing with tube amps. That's why I'm sweating because they're so freaking hot. Are you serious? You have some two yeah, apps. You got you got some two apps to review or what? That Dayton, that Dayton HTA two hundred. It's like hundred watts at four or one hundred fifty watts at four. I can't remember now. They spec it kind of weird. Them. I know, of course I know. I'm part of the pay. I'm part of the. Of course you so know. I'm gonna start. I'm I'm gonna start shilling out Aaron's Patreon. That's my new thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we always have to have something to shill. Tight pants. So I'm shilling out Aaron's Patreon because this dude actually puts in work. Over there, he 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 does the polls. I get an email. He's oh, asking emails. What, what do you, you? You can actually respond on the email. Can you directly? You can put it on the email and just choose the one on the email. Dude, that's awesome. Right, so yeah. I'm glad you actually told me that because when I posted that today, immediately I had somebody that replied. So I opened it up to reply back to him, and uh -huh. I I saw that there was like ten votes already, and I was like, Good lord! Like, how are people able to respond? So I mean, within <laughs> minutes. Work in the pole. <laughs> what does that mean? Like the North Pole, maybe? Because I'm Santa. Yeah, okay, right. yeah. Santa from Alabama. I'll be working so, at uh, South Pole. Wait. So it's funny because you asked, like, what do you want to review? Can I say like the ones that you you asked? Or no. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Is that is that allowed? Yeah, because nobody here you can vote on us. They're not patrons. You're like, do you want to us uh, to do you want do we want you to review uh, the Dayton Tube Amp or the Kef? Blade Meta 2 or whatever it's called, right? Blade 2 Meta, yeah. Blade 2 Meta. Too or legit. or what was the third one? These Neumann KH80. Okay. And uh, everybody, I think a lot of people want the, the Kefs. I like your reply. Yeah, go ahead. I want, I want you to hold on to those Kefs for as long as possible. I kind of want to. So I'm like, let's, let's leave that for last. I think that's a good idea. I'll just keep doing that poll when I'll be like, oh, something came up and I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm man. Not. Yeah, hey, you do an awesome job. So for anybody who's not uh, a patron, you know, He's shanked. There's there's only a few folks who are doing like awesome things, but I think Aaron's doing something awesome. So thank you. Definitely, if you have some extra funds and you want to support what he's doing, you know. He he's he's getting better at promoting his own stuff, you know. He's yeah. he has his own thing at the end, but he's the, the videos gotta, are also getting yeah, shorter in length, which is great. It's great. I don't, I don't, I don't end up wanting to like. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go to because I'm gonna see you in person in like three weeks. <laughs> so go ahead. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll forget you said it by then, but I'm pretty good at like. Uh, you're on like an grudges. elephant, bro. You'll never forget. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I won't forget. I'll just run up and punch you in the balls before you even have a chance to say, "Hey, I'll go, pow, pow. oh no." I'm going to be like, who was it? Jim Carrey and was it Ace Ventura? What was it? That he no, like, no, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> was it Dumb and Dumber? Wasn't it? Dumb was, and Dumber? was that it? When he, he was like, and then he gave like the sack lunch. Like he ripped the dude's heart out. Oh, what was that? Oh, he was like that. daydreaming or something. Look at that. A banner. Oh, look at that. Patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. Aaron's Audio Corner. That's yeah. right. Go, go, and, go and join and I will give you nothing in return. Go, go and join. You know. Yeah. 10 bucks. You could do it. You'll get a lot out of it. I enjoy it. I enjoy having that um, conversation with, with like, you know, with not the public sometimes for, for certain reasons. Well, also, you kind of tend to attract more of the people who kind of know what they're talking about. That's, yeah, that's so, kind of what I'm saying. Right. A little higher level. You know, you go in there and you ask a question and people are like, they actually know what they're saying. So, yeah, like Napier Lopez. Right, oh, like he gives his, the his feedback is always really good because it's very thoughtful and it always gives me like a different take on what I'm looking at, you know, because he has yeah. a different, different perspective, perspective of measurements yeah. and things because he's done a lot of them himself too. I like, yeah, that. exactly, exactly. So definitely, you know, I I want to plug that just because, well, thank you. you know, it's it's really it's really good what you're doing over there, 
it's a I, I don't even know how you do that and youtube because like youtube already is a lot of work to yeah. make videos edit videos review the thing and then like this is a whole different thing it's like you yeah. put a lot into it it's not just like here's a little extra you actually do a lot so and and then like you i my thing is like i can't i'm like i once this video's done i want to put it out into the world and you're like no this is for patrons only right now mm -hmm. <laughs> like i'm like oh i'm like yeah, how do you I'm trying do to that try to stick to the that, deal man, man. Yeah. you know that that's part of it if you join then you get to see the videos a little bit earlier and that's kind of the perk okay well yeah so go join and then uh if you do if you do then let them know it's from daily hi-fi yeah just so we I know we i want to know how good the, sh the shilling techniques are you know what i mean well i mean we need to we need to be able to track that i think we should just change this the the title of this podcast to this the doing awesome shit podcast because we're all three of us are just doing awesome <laughs> shit. we all do our own awesome <laughs> stuff separate stuff. like they're totally different though right yeah. like the stuff we do with spatial group different like we're creating yeah. like atmos content mm -hmm. um it, it is related somewhat to the magic bean stuff because yeah. it provides test tones that we use so that's a separate thing magic beans and then aaron is doing his crazy thing with like he's got clipple Got the Clipple, Clipple measurement. So Mr. Clipple over there. Let me tell you, this ABX switcher thing that I bought is so awesome. I've already, I've been ABX switching the uh that little Dayton <laughs> two amp versus the Wee amp. The, the Daily, Daily Show. I like yeah, that. perfect. I yeah. like that. <clears throat> so yeah, dude, be... that thing's awesome. I can't believe you spent the money on that. That's 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 why that's why I love this guy. Yeah, I was excited to finally get one. Yeah, he gets hyped up to buy the things that you will never even want to buy. <laughs> That's probably yeah, like, like, like a clip, like a clip. The results of it, yeah. But like, do you want to spend the money on a? What is it? What is the name of it? It's like a. It's Van Alstein is the company. They make amplifiers and stuff, but it's an ABX comparator, is what the it is. All right, so you can like so, switch between like instead of just a, a speaker switcher or an amp switcher, it's cool because it has that X factor. Uh -huh. So you can like okay. you can set it up and it'll run through eight tests and it'll switch between. A and B, mm -hmm. but then it'll also have that X, so it won't tell you what that X is. So mm -hmm. you'll get eight tests, and you try to like, all right, well, you write down like which ones you think you heard, like for round one, this is it, two, this is it. And then you can go back when it's done, you, it'll tell you, all right, number one was A, number two was B, number three was B, number, you know what I mean? Like, so that was what, was, what I was it. wondering. I was wondering how does it come out? Because, like, to me, that sounds like an old school device. Like, I feel like it's going to print it out on a piece of paper, like, like in dots, like a like those old scantrons. You yes. know, just have dots. Like here you go, or you mark C for everything. So, so is how does it show you what the selections were? Um, it shows you like on the screen, like there's a little matrix oh, okay. display thing that shows you what's what. So it's pretty neat, but uh, but yeah, dude, this this tube amp versus this weem, like you can definitely hear a difference. The bass no. is a lot more like fuller on the tube amp and then what yeah but like so then i go look at the data and it's just like oh well the frequency response of the tube amp is pretty wild there's like a one db or one and a half db bump around somewhere in the upper mid base i mean it's it's like oh well that's why i can hear a difference like that makes perfect sense pretty yeah neat. Very cool. That is that's really cool. How about how about the uh did you do one between the Weem amp and uh Aussie what is that other one? Bossy Z A3. No, not yet. I I want to. I also want to do the uh op amp switch thing and oh. get like two Fossies and then do the comparison like that, like one with the upgraded op amp and the other one without, and then mm -hmm. you know, just make a video. Like this is what I heard. Yeah, this is what we're talking about, by the way. Right? This is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty so, cool. Man. So it takes oh, okay, up to so it does have a screen. Yeah, yeah, it takes up so you can level match within like one tenth of a decibel um, through that. So like right now, I've got the two different amps feeding into the unit, and then the unit sending that signal out to the speakers, and it all just operates off relay. So there's really nothing in the signal path. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to level match the the two amps output, I just go in and I say, all right, I'm on amp B and I need to bring it down. I don't know, like 10 decibels or something. Mm -hmm. you know? So you, you do that. And then, then you got a level matched and then you just mm -hmm. go 
and you set it up to run, or you can manually switch it between the two, you know. How fast does it switch? It's pretty much instantaneous. Like, there's no lag. But there is a relay. The there is a like relay. You know. So you can, you know when it switches. But that's where that X thing comes in. So, like, if you're just doing A, B, all right, whatever. But that mm. X is the one that you don't know what it is. So you know that it switches because you hear a relay click, but you don't know if it switched over to source A or source B or amp A or amp B or speaker A, B, or C. Like, you don't know which one it's going to. Until... Until the end, and then you can look at the results at the end. And it seems like that X is going to give it to you. X going to give it to you. Going to give it to you. <laughs> First we go to rock. Waiting for that one. Hell yeah. <clears throat> that's, that's cool, awesome, man. Dude. I'm glad you got that. Then we go to oh. roll. <laughs> then we let it yeah, pop. Let go. Let it go. That's, you know, so are you going to mainly use that for apps or also for like, speakers or uh, i'll use it for pretty much everything at some point what i would like to do is to set up like some get-togethers around my area and invite people out and then maybe do like cable tests and that kind of stuff and oh. then make videos on it man yeah yeah and i know immediately people are going to be like oh you're gonna have the greatest source and i'm like cool i've got kept lay two metas like what else do you want from me oh uh, you need to upgrade the wires inside of the i got ABA. you well it's you just gotta... straight it's just straight copper Hold okay up. oh man Dude, that's going to be really cool. Why are your shorts so short? Because I'm sitting down. <laughs> You're lucky nothing was hanging out. That's how big they are. Um, This thing, when I do my amp testing. I almost went blind there for a second. It's copper alligator clips. Hold up. How can I have my okay. yeah, Copper alligator right. clips and pure copper wire. That's what I use for my for my amp testing. So Okay. You got don't it. come at me, bro. Yeah. Pure freaking All right. copper. All right. <clears throat> we'll see. Hey, you know what you should do? You should get one of those copper um little alligator clips with like on the side of it, like shaped like an ear. Just for the yes, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the daily I'll draw an ear on it. Man, I'm, with I'm, my so, ears. I'm so upset. I missed last week. How was last week? We had the big MB unveiling. Yep, yep. You know what? Right. That would be interesting to do a, a test if if possible. Hmm. I do that. With magic beans and see if like is it is it better? Maybe that's one way that it could help because I want to know. I I truly want to know. You know, I always mention the guys at uh, Audio and Unleashed, yes. and they always say like, show me some uh, blind tests. Yeah. You know, I, I I like you know the reasoning sounds good. All that sounds good. Um, let's Where let's do some free? tests. Let's let's. What do people actually think? Do they like it better? Does it sound yeah. worse? You know, yeah. so Is it like calibrating a TV and you're just like, well, now it just looks dull. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now it just sounds like less bass. Joe, what did you do? Yeah. What yeah. Did you took away my bass. Yeah. No, nah, um, we'll see. We'll have to wait. Measure to RPH speakers. <laughs> um, no, they're big. Actually, they have some bookshelf speakers. You know, as we get into... You know, as we proceed to give you what you need, thank you, uh, and get into 2024, 2025. You know, I, I hope we can, you know, st as 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 a subjective kind of person I am, we just get away from from all of this, you know, highfalutin <laughs> shit. This just doesn't make any sense, and there's no <laughs> nothing to back it up, data wise. Um, I've had this string of emails with this guy, Carlos, right? He has been freaking out, not freaking out, but he has been going back and forth with me. He's like, something's wrong with your file. I'm like, I don't think so, man. I don't think something's wrong with the file. So finally, he got it, down to it. Basically, anytime there was a side surround left or right sound, it was it was being imaged between his front speakers and his side and his surround speakers for some reason. And he found out finally. After a bunch of emails back and forth with the manufacturers, they he he missed an update, and his shit's been wrong for like two years. Oh wow! And this is what I'm talking about. This is yeah, what what, can we say the brand? Like what was? I gotta find the email. Hold on. Like, what if other people are having that issue and they? Dude, I'm gonna make a video about it. Okay. So All right. But, so uh, you want to save it? Yeah. I wait. 
Here it is. Not I was totally wrong. His name is Ricardo. Oh man, I'm fucked. Ricardo Carlos. <laughs> Ricardo. 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 Ricky Ricardo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, we're such assholes. I love it. Um. Uh. Yeah, like me. Yeah, sorry, it's just me. Um. Like uh um I he says I imagine most AV receivers are already updated with this uh, provided the OEM release this update otherwise they're in the previous iteration of Dolby Atmos decoding like the Sony one that I have so oh it was a Sony one crazy <laughs> yeah all right well yeah because like he he kept messaging me I'm like man I don't I, don't, I started I was like I don't know if I can help this guy mm. if, you know if he keeps saying that like it's 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 the disc or the file and it just it just it just isn't and so that's what i'm talking about and let's let me try to land the damn plane here i think that's what's awesome about the spatial audio calibration toolkit though is it's set like we know what it does we've had lots of people testing it out we know what it does so it's kind of like if there's an issue it's probably not the disc <laughs> well this this is what i'm trying to get into and land the plane thanks joe for the mm -hmm. assist there uh, you got, with the, you got things like the clipple. We got we now we know what the AVR is supposed to do. We know we now have a way to test it with our toolkit. We have you know clipple to actually show us what these you know speakers can do on a you know measurement kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I you know I just even though even though Joe you remember I'm like ah, I don't want to take any measurements now I'm like oh what how do I do this oh this is easy yeah. you know and I'm I'm all in there doing it. I know if yeah. my dumbass can figure it out, you guys could easily do it. it. I think it's about closing that circle of confusion, right? Like circle, circle of, of confusion. confusion. Is that a song or is that yeah, closing a, yeah. time? No, it's like land of confusion. Land of, oh, Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a circle of confusion. Keep, keep gotcha, going, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, circle of confusion just basically says like, well, we don't know what the source is, right? We don't know what they recorded it on. We don't know how it's supposed to sound like. So if you use that as your test, well, we don't know if we, there's so much that we don't know, right? Sure. Well, okay. I think by measuring the speakers, right? We know what the mics do because we can measure those. We, you and I, we know what the, the test tones are doing because we made them. <laughs> we made the test tones and the, it's not like we're doing anything artistic with this uh, toolkit. They're just straight up like we're playing pink noise. It's not artistic computer generated it and we know exactly how it's supposed to look um so it's just closing the circle of confusion and i think that's what we're trying what i'm trying to do with magic beans also is like give you an accurate response from your speakers All right so i'm not i'm not doing anything artistic i'm trying to make the speaker sound as good as possible when it comes to accuracy you know so we'll get into that in a bit and i think what aaron i think what i I like that you're doing is you start off just doing straight up like measurements, right? That's kind of your, that was your thing, but it yeah. seems like you're trying to marry the two of uh objective. And what do yeah. you, what do you hear? Mm -hmm. Do measurements. So now yeah. you're, you have this thing where you can just listen and you're, you're comparing it just based on your, you're measuring with your ears. Yeah. And how does that, how does that compare to the actual measurements? So it's just connecting things. I think that's where it's at, you know? Yeah relating yeah. things to each other for sure um uh, and it's no, fun no nothing says the problem that chana just described about the sony i really think my denon does that you know and and and, and for all of, just imagine that for all of these years we just kind of had to believe that it was working right from 2014 to 2024 but you know now that joe and i created the spatial toolkit um by the way, I just want to, hey, we need to change the thing on the website. I know, Angela, you're watching. I know you probably got your hands full. You got like, you know, three kids over there to juggle. You know, three Grammy. kids? Yeah, you too, bro. You, you're the third one, bro. You're the biggest one. <laughs> He's like, three kids. You. Did, you, did you forget a birthday again, Joe? <laughs> oh, no. Um, But uh, yeah, we should change that banner, Angela, to the number one selling Dolby Atmos calibration disc. Oh, number one. Number yeah, one. I think that is probably true. Um, oh, speaking of like issues with AVRs and things like that. So right now, what we found is with MultiQX, 
you know, with magic beans, one of the methods is we transfer the stuff using multi QX and then we tell people to exclude those measurements. Uh, we found out that if you exclude the measurements and send that, it disables your sub. <laughs> Oh, and really? I made them aware over there at Odyssey and they're working on something. But just in case, if you're using this, if you're even if you're not using using magic beans, if you send it and you exclude the measurements, you may find that it's not seeing the sub and it'll sell it'll automatically set your left and right to large. And you can you can choose small, but the moment it sends it to your AVR, it's gonna be set to large. And the problem is when you set it to small again on the AVR it doesn't see the sub, so it, it doesn't know what to do, and it just turns off Odyssey. So what we found was a temporary fix until they work on it is to send it a uh, send it with the measurements first. So you have to send it with all the measurements included, and then after that's done, then you can send the one with the measurements excluded. So that's one thing. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron said, everyone's like, Beanstalk, I'm out. Um. Yeah. So that's that's that. What else? Were you? You know, you look like you got a. You've been relaxing. Shauna, you feeling good? I'm feeling great, man. All right. All I don't right. know what well, happened. What questions do we have? I saw a super chat. Let's get to that real quick because. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, Christian. Can, hmm. Can so, so, I'll do can, it. I'll do can, it. I'll. Do it. I'll uh, oh, Kansichi. Kansichi. Yeah. Why do you say it with such confidence, though? It looks, it's it's phonetic, man. Come on. Kansichi. At first, I thought I, I saw a little. Anyway, I I, I just thought it was. Gonna, actually, I was on a, actually I was on a different tab sending out an email, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I thought it was gonna be long, and I, and I, I walked out, went over, and I was. Oh, we need yeah. to get Aaron in here. Aaron, don't you have the admin creds already? I did, but then I got all the way out of my my. Chrome browser blew up on me. So when I came back in, it said it had to resend that code to the email. This, this is definitely, uh, first of all, thank you, Christian. Thank you for the super chat, $5 super chat. And uh, this is probably an Aaron question because I don't, I don't have any experience with this. Get him. So he asked, what do you guys think of the JBL HDI series? This, there's a great deal on the 3800 at Audio Advice right now. Yeah, I'm about to look and see what the price is. I'm curious. I guess I guess I, I guess I said it right. <laughs> Woo! Wait, no. Are you clapping for yourself, man? <laughs> you know it, sucker. <laughs> How much are they? Come on, website load. Oh. Anyway, I remember them being good speakers. I only had one gripe about them, and that was that uh, it sounded like there was a, a stage split between the woofers and the tweeter at like certain vocal regions. But I think that was the only gripe that I actually had about them. Otherwise, I think they're really great speakers. And at that price, I don't know that that's beatable. What is the price? Because they're $12.50 each instead of $27.50. Yeah, $12.50 each. Mm. On oh, it. if you, okay. So they're $12.50 each if you get it in that, like a wood grain color. Well, either of the two wood grain colors. And not gloss black. That's a pretty dang good deal. Hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and then somebody else posted about what is this RSL 10E? What is a 10? Shield this yeah. up. Hold up, bro. Okay, you got a link. I got. I bet I got an affiliate link. Go ahead. Just looking. Um, where is it? What is the RSL 10E? I know this 10 RSL Speedwoofer 10. I don't know. Did I'm not familiar it? with that. It's just that like one? economic electric. Yeah. I had to look on my keyboard to see if the E is next to the S. 299. I got it on screen. Hold on. Okay. Speed Wolfer. Coming soon, mean? March 29th. 299? Okay. Really? Huh. That's pretty huh. inexpensive. That's pretty cheap. 800 watt peak, okay. 300 watt RMS, okay. So I've reviewed the Speed Woofer. Well, I didn't actually review it. You just have it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Uh, the 10s. It's a. It does what it needs to do, and it's also pretty inexpensive. It goes boom and boom. I also have the 12 
Speed Wolfer 12S, and that oh. thing's a monster, and that thing definitely does what it's supposed to do. So, yeah, RSL is, uh, you know, based on my experience, their stuff performs. Two ninety nine though, wow, the subwoofer for everyone. There you go. I mean, everyone can afford it, and if you are rich, you just get like ten of them. <laughs> get ten and of then them. now you're paying three thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. I like seeing affordable stuff like this. Can yeah, yeah. What oh, was you stuck down there? Sorry, Aaron. That's all right. What is the other one? RSL Speed Woofer. Can you see if there's another one there? Is it called the 10S? Uh, products. So 10S, yeah. 10S MK2. How much is the 10S MK2? Shilling. Yeah, let's go. No, I don't have an affiliate link, so. I just dropped an affiliate link there if he wants to use it. Oh, know. there you go. So what is the E? It is for everyone. A, let's... Oh. Uh, I don't know what the E is for. Is it sealed? Oh, oh no, yeah, everyone. It's for everyone. That's what it says. The 10E, everyone. <laughs> I no, mean, it's there's, ported. A, there's a slot. Yeah. Okay. Is there's it just a, smaller, maybe? There's a slot in the rear. You know, I'm a sucker for a cone that doesn't have like a visible uh -oh. dust cap. Careful, man. <laughs> so you like a circumcised cone? <laughs> What are you, you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? a cone that doesn't have a dust cap. Oh my. <laughs> See what happens when you have a legit engineer? <laughs> Engineers are freaking nuts, man. The <laughs> rocket over here. I feel embarrassed by having said that now. So <laughs> <laughs> you lost oh, okay. all credibility. You're, you're well, what is this? 300 bar of mass. How does this compare to the 10S MK2? Uh, what is this 10S? Uh, oh no, RSL that's why I'm. 10. Is that just a smaller version, like a more room friendly version or something? Well, one thing I can tell for sure is the 10S. No, I think it had a, a front port on the 10S. 400 watts. 449. I'm wrong. It is a rear port. What? Yeah, rear mounted slot. Right. Yeah, right there. There it is. You see it? It's on screen. Oh, that's because the old one had a front. Okay. So I wasn't. This is not a old. slot. This is the, just a gap between the yeah. grill and the. Yeah. So this is the MK2. Their old one is the 10S, not MK2. Uh, Mark II. Aaron was about to get on me on that. I know. I wasn't going to say anything, dude. I don't care. People I mean, I, I thought me. we were. I thought I was going to, you know, pick Raiden or. It just sounds cooler to say, say MK2. 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 Yeah. Mortal Kombat 2, baby. Yeah. Uh, this is the fighting subwoofer. Okay, so 400 watts RMS, 10 inch woofer. That's it, right? Is it the main? So difference? 400 versus 300, and then lower in price by like almost by like 150 bucks. Yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, if it's somewhat decent, 300 bucks for a sub is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. As long as it does what what is uh what does it say it goes down to? Does it say any spell? I don't think it has anything on here. It just says it's coming. Sign up okay. for updates. That's it. And if you scroll yeah. down, that's that's it. We can accept the cookie thing. Okay. No, that's it. No. All right. All right. They're Good using to the... Good to know they're closed on Saturday and Sunday. They're using the techniques of having like sign up to be notified. Oh, mm. somebody oh. they're learning from the bean master over there. Oh man, <laughs> the bean copying. Yeah, so there is form of flattery, right? Isn't that it? Twenty six hertz, really, Michael? Really? Is that what they said? Do you know that mm. already? Yeah. Well, what happens when you turn it up though? And that's not like you know you guys know what I'm talking about. They a lot of these companies now are using boosting on the lower end. But when you start cranking it up, it starts bringing that down. So. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Master lessons, fun, making some jokes. <laughs> yeah, they're using my, my techniques right here. Look at We got a countdown for early access oh. for Magic Beans. Mm -hmm. uh, when is it? 19th. I need, I need to look at it so I can remember. 
Christopher <laughs> Commander. I didn't even see this. Cupped in the front, slot in the back. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I didn't even see that. Y'all are a bunch of children, is what it is. That's exactly it. What's up, bad guy? Fifty six. He's the fifty six <laughs> bad guy. There was fifty five yeah, before me, but I'm the most, I'm the baddest of them all. He's the baddest of them all. So, so I did. Chana, yes, I did come out with the uh, magic beans for the public beta testers. So we had a good amount of people signed up for that, right? And yeah. people who have been waiting for a long time. So I'm glad that finally somebody can try it out other than me. And me. <laughs> and you and a handful <laughs> of other private testers. And it's cool because the feedback has been really good so far, you know. It's really, really cool to hear people like, dude, this sounds awesome or whatever. So much better. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the thing, you know, because like, I don't know if you guys know here, but like when I talk to Joe, man, I'm really not that articulate. It's just like, how do you like, oh, it's, it's awesome, bro. What is, <laughs> what is it? What, what, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, it just sounds better. <laughs> it's like, well, that doesn't help. I'm like, sorry. So. Uh, MB Ross. I'm, ha I'm happy for you, man. Finally, Woo! let's give it up for Joe. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Angela and the girls. Thank you. Yeah, we're doing things. We're we're making moves. You know. That's right. That's what you got to do. Called? The, the Shill Podcast, the Daily Shill yeah. Podcast. Right. Well, I'm doing mean, your own stuff. <laughs> or just the odd, totally awesome podcast. The totally yeah, at awesome least audio podcast. Stuff. Isn't there one of those? What is that? Isn't there? Being serious, isn't there something called like the Totally Awesome podcast or something? Yeah, yeah, it's that it's that one girl that's like super awkward. Her her interview with Shaq was hilarious. Oh, yeah. Uh, I hope you don't mind, by the way, Aaron. On okay. uh, on one of my tutorial videos, actually, it's a tutorial on how to do the moving mic. Okay. You know, uh, I show like above the transition region. I did the, I just picked any speaker. It was like the Arendel 1723. And I'm like, oh, actually, there's some spinorama data on that. Yeah. And I pulled it up and I was hoping that the measurements would look pretty close. <laughs> yeah. And above the tran transition, it's like, ah, oh, that's, that's pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. Like, I, I feel good about correcting this speaker based on this type of measurement. Yeah. Um, what, what so, he's trying to say, Aaron, is he he did not ask permission for using your data. Yeah, I noticed that. I don't know. <laughs> you need to that, that. Huh? Actually, I got it from Spinorama. Oh no! You went you went above me, or you went behind <laughs> my back, is what you did. That's what it did. So uh, yeah, the Magic Beans does use this moving mic method, and I thought it was cool that I saw this. I can post a link to this. Uh, certain certain AES papers are just public, like you don't have to pay for them. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know because I'm I'm a oh, member. Cool. So know. let me zoom in a little bit yeah. on this, and that's maybe the uh, name. I think I want to have Charles on to talk about this. You know, congratulations to him. He was he seemed pretty happy that he he got this into the AES. But yeah. Charles Sprinkle is the one who taught me how to do the moving mic stuff. Right, yeah. he taught everybody because we had him on. Uh, yep, what was it daily? No, it was a, a hi fi summit. Was it a hi fi, hi -fi summit? summit. Hi -fi, oh, dude, I still got my hi fi summit shirt. Oh, look at that, you're chilling like a villain, dude. Yep, yeah. yeah. so um, he's the one who showed me, and he has this paper showing the benefits of using moving mic average, is what he calls it. And he goes into pretty, pretty good detail. You know, he has this different motion, how you do like a Zorro looking pattern. Uh huh. And uh, how many measurements? 180 measurements. So he compares it versus 180 measurements. I'll let him talk about exactly what happens. But I think part of it is, uh, you know, if you're calibrating a console situation where you got speakers, you got a big old console. If you're only measuring on one plane, what mm -hmm. ends up happening is you get a, a bounce off that console yep. or whatever, and it's it shows up on all the measurements if you're only measuring on one plane. So that's kind of the issue. That's kind of why you want to move up and down and do a spatial 3D spatial average. So anyway, uh, this is available for anybody who wants to nerd, nerd out about this. But I just wanted to share that because 
we use moving mic average according to this moving mic average mma, MMA. instead of mmm it's mma okay <laughs> let me paste it here that's how, that's how it gets in this audio youtube space bro i guess we gotta bring in a little MMA. the moving mic the average MMA. so yeah maybe i'll have charles on one day and he can talk about that and his findings yeah i think that's pretty cool well we, i mean car audio guys have known that all right huh? you guys have been doing moving mic stuff yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised that it's an AES paper in 2023. Like, I'm kind of like, I'm wondering what what makes it different. You know, like, mm, I know he had one from like 2018. Yeah, where they were using moving mic measurement for a theater situation. I think yeah. he, this one is specific to smaller rooms, smaller rooms, and also the effect of the direction of the capsule. Yeah. You know, so you notice that if you have a U mic, you have a zero degree where it's pointed straight and another one a 90 degree. Mm -hmm. They're different calibrations. Mm. Right. And so that's why his moving mic measurement is a little bit different, like where he's he's getting an average of the different um, uh, polar positions of that microphone. So anyway, I'll let him explain because. I sound like an idiot trying to explain something that somebody else did. I think you're really it. technical. <laughs> um, anyway, that that's kind of cool. Um, I have a note here that I wanted to talk about using uh, in situ near field response because I think it's generally known that it's a good idea to measure using something like somewhat like pseudo anechoic right yeah or anechoic if you can get anechoic right um but what i've been finding lately is i have somebody who is using magic beans i don't know if you're in the in the chat but i was working with him and he has some nice revel f206 is that is that a model yeah f206 okay yeah. so those are nice speakers yeah. uh except one is right next to the wall ah uh. Like, and then yeah, the, I looked at the measurements and what's interesting about these measurements. So somebody can send me a, a MBM file. So that's Magic Beans measurement. And it has all of the measurements there. Uh -huh. Near field, main listening position, shows all the correction curves, everything. So they can send me one file and I can just open it all up into REW. And that's what the pro version does. Some people are asking the difference. The pro version allows you to export and... Um, so I looked at I looked at his measurements and I'll before even him telling me, I'm like, your left speaker's near a wall, right? He's like, yep. And I can, it's easy to tell, right? <laughs> you look at the measurements and then one has a lot more bass and actually a little bit of uh, comb filtering happening in the higher frequencies. Cause it's it's like right next to it, like mm, right up. Really? Next. Yeah. And and I asked him, like, can you possibly move that? And he's like, mm, not really. You know, this is where it has to be. So yeah. I think that's one case where I think it is useful to be able to correct based on an in-room near field response because that data doesn't show up. He has an identical left and right speaker, but they measure differently, even in the higher frequencies, some of the higher frequencies. Okay. Um, so I think that's one, one uh, you know, that's one use case why you'd want to do something in room, like when so, a, a situation like that. Um, another thing I'm finding out is looking at some people's measurements, I'm like, there are some issues that Magic Beans will not fix, right? Mm -hmm. it, it just cannot fix it. Like they're physical issues. Like you know, speaker so, issues or placement issues, both? Both, yeah, right? So directivity, we've already said directivity, I can't fix that. That's a physical property of the speaker. Yeah. Also, um sometimes i'll see a response and it's like there's like no bass rise whatsoever and you're like hmm, you kind of expect a little bit of bass rise right yeah some bass rise in a room but what i end up thinking is like mm, you may be sitting in a partial null yeah. your main listening position and might be not a full like it's not going down but it's like it's also not rising and so we're finding that that is the case also <laughs> Oh man. Um, 
but yeah, I think that's one thing that I think is useful is you start to find out issues that need to be resolved with, with like, you need to move that speaker. You need to put a panel right next to that to absorb some, that first reflection, you know, and it's real easy to tell with the measurements. Yeah. Tayo said, Joe looking at other people's measurements. <laughs> Horrible. 36. He's actually, he's actually 36. compiling it into a book. A book. <laughs> there he is. A oh, database. Yeah. I thought Reason. it would be cool to. He's going to release it. <laughs> I thought it would be cool to eventually have it so that maybe in the future, but to have it so that people can upload their, their responses and then have it kind of like a database where it's organized based on like their speaker and their room size, you know, so you can start to see like a pattern, hopefully of like, Oh, my room is, are, you know, these are the dimensions of my room and you know, or Look just, or just, or 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 if, or if people could put the yeah, they put the dimensions of their room, mm -hmm. and then just pop up all the possible ones, and then you just notice that like, look, every even the dimensions of room of the room are the same. <laughs> it can be wildly different, right? That is really the truth, right? When no. when it comes to this stuff, everybody, well, you guys probably know Magic Beans is it's called True Target is the app, and the idea is to find the actual target response for your speaker for that room in the listening position. And one way that you can you can see, obviously, that a generic target curve won't work is take that same exact speaker and put it in a different location in your room. Already you have a different response, right? That's the same exact speaker. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same room. Or move. Move to a different location and see how it sounds. I mean, it's pretty obvious that that you can't just use any any old curve, right? Um, but yeah, you can sign up for early access magicbeansaudio.com. And if anybody here is currently using it, go ahead and uh, give a little give a little comment. Let let us know what your experience has been so far. Anyway, that's all. Comment, comment. All right, comment. should we um go into some questions here? Do some yeah. questions, man. All right. Let's go. I gotta hey get Joe, out of here. I have a question about Magic Beans. Can you use your own custom bands and Q factors for the export? Of course, nice. of course. That's that's a big yeah, definitely. Let me show you. Let me show you. Show you. you. <laughs> let me show you. <laughs> uh, I'm creeping me out with that voice. <laughs> let me show you. It, Joe showed me this guy. It's, this guy's hilarious on YouTube. Oh man. Let that's me so show you. Uh, you this okay so let me share present share window all right so you can choose generic here generic generic, generic. generic. and then when you go to export you select the number of bands that you have okay you got okay i got a weem app okay i got four bands all right and then the Weem can do 12 dB boost and cut. And then the gain rounding is 0.1. And the max Q factor on that, I think, is like 20 or something like that. Wow, this is, this is new? Uh, no, it's been here for a long time. So, oh, never it, it. yeah, Chana. So it'll I, I didn't need you to use it. <laughs> yeah, it'll adjust to the parameters of your PEQ. So if, if the Weem... If they do an update and they allow eight, then you just go boom, move it to eight bands, and now it'll export eight bands of PEQ. Look at that. It's yeah. pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my developer is awesome. So <laughs> too busy eating to notice. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I say is I want this to happen. And I say, you figure it out. I, this is what I want. So I have the easy part. Um, what else? Looking at Aaron's CEA results for the SVS SB3000 compared to Alco Audioholics, huge difference in the output, especially in the 20 hertz region. Oh, I guess that wasn't a question. Who started this? Hmm. All right. Any comments there, Mr. No, I got no comments. Look at my results. <laughs> Guys, any thoughts on the new Evo Emotiva speaker line? Well, I got to at least go back and <laughs> let me say for the SVS one. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was the one that I found that I had issues with. So wherever, if it's not on my website, then 
it's probably the one that I wound up figuring out that I had the wrong calibration sensitivity. So just go with James's. I'm fine with that. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, Emotiva speaker line, brand new. Did, were there some YouTube videos about this earlier today? Yeah. I, I don't know. Talking about it. Emotiva. Um, hopefully. What? Hopefully soon. We'll see. Yeah, you're going to get some in. What are they called? Do you know? I got different ones. Uh, the ones that I was asking about were the bookshelf ones. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know what they're called now. B2? B2 no. sounds familiar. Yeah. Okay, let me see. Let me bring this up. I mean, if it's a brand new Emotiva speaker, shouldn't it be on the website? One it review. Should be. Yes. Early adopter special. 15% off two or more. Notify me when available. Uh-oh. They oh, sold okay. out. Oh, they have a podcast, the Emotiva podcast. Never yeah, heard. I've actually watched a couple of them. They're pretty entertaining. They don't. It's not like all just salesmansy type stuff, you know. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but realistically, you're talking about a company that has a podcast. Mm -hmm. So you expect it to be basically like a a like marketing thing. One right? of your videos. Yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Oh, this anyway, guy. I watched a couple of them. They're pretty good. All right, cool. Cool. So let's go back to the speaker. Why is my scroll not working on this mouse? I don't know, but somebody, uh, where is this guy? Two boys of reason. Where are you? Man, it's hard to find stuff. There's just so many people in the chat. It's amazing. Thank you guys all for hanging out, by the way. Yeah. So True. like the uh, the previous versions, they had, what the hell? Oh, that's right. You can turn it. Um, <laughs> the previous version, the B1 Plus that I reviewed a couple years back was really good. And they had mm -hmm. the B2 Plus that was like, I was thinking like, you guys kind of went the wrong direction on this one. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be curious to see what they do with this B2 and then their other tower speakers. With them being a direct to consumer there's a lot of opportunity for them to have a really good priced, but high quality product, kind of like SVS, right? Same mm -hmm. thing. I'm, I'm very curious to see what SVS's new stuff is going to be like as well. You like this new slogan here? What is it? I said that. It keeps the poverty away. Huh? Dude, the way that no, I'm done. I'm not going to say <laughs> Yeah, no comment. Yeah. No comment. Yeah, we kind of we kind of make fun of that. And um, you know why we can do that? Just to let you guys know why. You know, we can do that. Like we we make products like Chana and I have a product, right? We the, YouTube is not our main thing. You know what I mean? So I'm not relying on a company to, you know, send me stuff and be happy with what what I do. Uh, just not my thing. So anyway, I've got a and I've got a day job that like yeah, makes way more money than YouTube would ever make me, I'm pretty sure. So there it is. Realistically. What are what are some of the other comments here that we haven't gotten to? Oh yeah, here, 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 here. here. Uh, what do you guys think the next evolution in audio will be, and what type of audio and video technology would you like to see? Ooh, I, hmm. I don't know the answer to that. You know, like I'm not—I've well, never been a good forward planner, thinker person. Is that because so. you're ass backwards? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Dude. <laughs> You are cruising for a bruise. And let, me tell you what, let me tell you what. I'm coming after you, bro. All right, Bama boy, let's go. Bama boy. I, I think you have to explain like how far ahead and what segment, oh. right? Because uh. if we're talking about two channel, I think that Weem app is actually uh, advanced in the fact that like it's easy to use. It looks cool. Sounds good. It has a lot of functionality. You yeah. know, you can be streaming. It's just simple, you know, and it works like Chana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and you said, yeah. And then works. Not that's even paying that's attention to me right now. That's all I got. Um, simple and work. I think the future next evolution is uh, more people using magic beans to tune up their systems and hopefully, you know, integrate it with more, uh, more devices. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, you know, and, I think, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say speakers that are EQable. Right? I would hope that more companies would start focusing a lot on making sure that the crossover design and the enclosure design is conducive to equalization. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a that's a great starting point. You know, 
before i mean recently we just we're, you know there's a lot so many speakers that haven't been measured and so even something as simple as like the direct on access response we didn't even know what that was right you're kind of just guessing yeah. so i think the next step is what is the directivity right, right? how eqable are these speakers because if they're if you start getting a bunch of speakers that you can eq really well then you can use something like magic beans and make them sound exactly how they should sound and the amp manufacturer or the speaker manufacturer doesn't have to make a powered monitor right you you have a device that can do the dsp it's called your avr or prepro or a wee amp right that could be yeah. your the brains yeah, and visually. you have an amplifier right you can choose your amplifier you can choose whatever whatever amp you want um tube amp. and then the correction can be you can use tube amp if you want well probably yeah. it'll probably correct what the tube amp is doing no. but <laughs> don't want to do that. Uh, want to so, take away that warmth yeah that warmth is just bass by the way <laughs> uh i i mean you start seeing a lot more speakers that are actually really good and affordable yeah. like like that new cali audio one yeah right why is it good because there there's a lot of dsp in it if you take that out is it going to measure as well probably not probably not yeah I mean, right. they could they could make it really good, right? But not for that price. Yeah. So you'll see that lower cost, cost, better sound because they're using this thing called a computer. Yeah, yeah. and then they're not measuring with their ears. That's a, yeah, that's true. But um, and, and it goes back to what I what I stated earlier. You know, as we get into twenty twenty four and in and then it to twenty twenty five in the future. Um, you know, doing all of these, uh, you know, having all the data and producing products based on data, you're probably going to, you know, have a great speakers. Um, what I was going to say about this is that, uh, going to the mix immersive <clears throat> event, you got, you know, 20, what was it? What did they say? Manny Marquine and, uh, Jimmy Jam. Well, he, the guy said like 22 Grammys uh, combined on stage uh, right there. Um, and they were like, you know, we've been in stereo for 99 years. Yeah. <laughs> think, think, think about that. Think yeah. about that. If if we're talking audio, uh, going into surround and spatial is a big deal. And I don't, I don't think we're gonna, you know, uh, someone might be able to put some speakers into the floor, sure, you know. But uh, and then Sony's got their three three rows of speakers in front, but lower, right? So. You know, I don't know. I, I don't. I think with audio, we're still just with and spatial and atmos. We're just kind of barely scrape, scraping the surface. Mm -hmm. Ten years into it, as far as video, man, I would love to see a twelve-bit TV panel. I would love to see that, but we all know that it's easier and cheaper to go up in K's, meaning A K sixteen K thirty two K resolution. So I would bet that we're we're gonna start seeing more eight K. You know, we're going to start seeing all kinds of craziness in that aspect. But the thing that we, we could really use is a 12 bit panel, which is what Dolby Vision actually needs to work properly. Uh, but everything else is still a 10 bit panel. So it doesn't, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. So that's what I would like to see 12 bit TV panels coming out for video, for audio. I think we're, we're still in it with Atmos and Spatial for a little while, maybe another 100 years. Yeah, I think uh, like so when you talk about Atmos and stuff like that, though, I have to consider like what the typical consumer. Number one, do they want that? And then number two, how do they get in their house without building, you know, a home theater or having speakers got, all over? You got the place? it on their phone player. <clears throat> you Dude, you got headphones now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if um, what if it moved to to more of a binaural situation where you just have. In wall speaker on the left, in wall speaker on the right. I'd be cool. Wide you have to sit in the middle. You sit in exactly the middle. <laughs> well, if it's a if it's a line array, it'll be a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. But everything is binauralized so that you can have a pretty decent experience. Yeah. Using two speakers on the side, and maybe you, you probably still need a center. Maybe something like that. Yeah. You know, I don't know. No. Yeah. You could probably. That'd be. That's interesting stuff to think about, you know, because people are smart. Like people, the stuff that people figure out, I'm just like, dang, how'd you come up with that? So well, I like to think that I, I'm one of those people, right? 
I like to think of something that I, that sounds cool, and then I'm like, you know what? That's not out yet. Let me make it. Yeah. Yeah. Or find whoever I need to do to make this thing. Like so, forever we've talked about. Here's this is this question here. Reverend Slim says, I think uh, MB's handling uh, below the transition was one of the best things that came out of the closed beta. Um, I think so. So thank you to the folks who were part of the private beta. Um, did you see this part, Aaron? This thing that we do? It's called the Unified Sound Field. So we have different EQ options where we can EQ each speaker right, to have a flat response oh i see what you're doing near field okay. we have a global target where all the speakers sound the same at your main listening position but that's what everything else does right yeah, yeah. makes it sound the same there but then we have a unified eq where see this is a per channel right so these are all the speakers here in my room yeah they're all the same exact speaker the monolith thx compact satellite mm -hmm. right? if i eq those so that they're flat near field well, it, the one in the corner is still going to be affected by the bass. Right. Mm -hmm. So they still will sound th different, even if I EQ all of them to flat mm -hmm. airfield. Um, so we came up with this method where we find we find oh, the actual oh, transition. Oh, 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 oh. It's like magic. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we, we find the transition region where the sounds start to diverge. Yeah. Okay. And um, we blend the two. So it's not like a direct, like on and off, right? It doesn't like, oh, you. here's the splice point. Right. But um, so near field, it's correcting the near field response of the speakers. And then it begins to to blend to this unified uh, bass response. Yeah, that's cool, man. I like yeah, that. So idea. instead of this, then it your, your EQ starts to look like this, where the near field response of each speaker is corrected, but the bass still will sound the same where you're sitting. You don't want it to sound all different. You know, you, when Sean is moving from one side, you don't want him to sound like, uh, you know, Chipmunk over here. And then... <laughs> that's, how, that's how he sounds. Right. And, you want, and you want it to be Toad, Sean. Luther Vandross, when it goes to the height speak, you know, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So anyway, I thought that was cool. Inside your room. Directivity Ooh. detect, that's kind of a cool <laughs> thing that we figured out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we we already know that you can't EQ certain parts, so we try to discover where there are some directivity mismatches, and we say mm, probably shouldn't try to correct that area. Yeah. So lots of smart things going on here based on stuff that we already know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Big ups to everybody in the uh, in the beta. You guys in the Discord. Um. Do you sell Do you sell the mic with Magic Beans? No, so that's actually uh, something I wanted to talk about. We recommend the U-Mic one just because it works, right? It works with your phone. Everybody has one. It just, it works. It's reliable. Um, but you can use a less expensive device like the Dayton IMM6. I believe it's like a little tiny mic and it's a, you know, you have to plug it in with a headphone jack. I think they have a new one that's USB and they're inexpensive. A little bit less accurate, I would say. And I don't know if it's going to work on every single thing. Like, it might have an issue with your phone. You know, I, these are things we don't know. Um, but that IMM6 with a, a dongle, it works. I've tried on several devices and it works. So if you want to save some money, you can go that route and just be ready to return it if it doesn't work for your device. So what else? Um, mm -hmm. First time ever experiencing a target curve EQ for my speakers. Oh uh, yeah, so hopefully that's good. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. For this is his first comment. Oh. Can confirm I am hearing new sounds in movies I've watched before a dozen times. First time ever experiencing a target curve EQ for my speakers, like custom. Yeah, so, very cool. That's what it does, man. And you know what's funny? I think I remember looking at his calibration because for the folks who are part of the uh, public beta, you know, there's few enough where I can do a little extra and I'll take a look at their uh, their curves and see, you know, exactly what's happening and maybe make some other suggestions to them. But I think his had less trouble response, right? Normally you think, oh, I hear more detail. The first thing that pops into your mind, like, oh, I probably boosted the trouble a little bit, right? No, 
it actually reduced the trouble, but you still have more detail because it sounds like it's supposed to. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what else? Uh, any more magic beans? I'll just knock them all out real oh, quick. Magic all beans ones, let's see. Shilling. Uh, ma- handle subs. How does magic beans handle subs? Okay, so a question I get is if you have multiple subs, how can we calibrate all of them? We can only calibrate a channel. Right, so if you have a sub out, single sub out, and you have 20 subs connected to it, we can't EQ each sub. That may be something we'll do in the future. But for right now, what we recommend, let's say if you have four subs, you connect a, a single sub out to a mini DSP 2x4 HD, and that has four outputs. Let that mini DSP make the relationship between all those subs correct. Time yeah. alignment, phase alignment, levels, you know, frequency response, and get get yourself a flat response at your listening position. And then what Magic Beans will do is it'll provide a target curve from that flat response, and it'll adjust that response, right, as a single yeah. unit. So we don't do each sub individually, but that's, yeah, that's it. We we do a single sub out. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, what else? Has Magic Beans been used on the Kef Blade 2 metas, Aaron? Oh, man. If it did anything, if it if it I even think it would a little bit, I wouldn't. I don't think I wouldn't even need it, man. That's how great they are. <laughs> Actually, the base is too strong on those things, man. They could probably use some EQ reduction to bring it down. Some. Uh, Actually, some you reduction. know, what isn't that like a breast, a br- like a breast reduction? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need a like <laughs> the horror, a <The> horror. Yes, <laughs> we need oh, a base dude. reduction. <laughs> you know me, <laughs> slap. Slapping the engineers in the face. <laughs> the, test, the test for magic beans is if it tries to do any EQ to the high frequencies, like, hmm, why would you do that? Yeah. But if why? it doesn't do anything, it's like, hmm. Yeah. Maybe he's yeah. doing something right here. Um, Van asked magic beans tutorial. Uh, I might make one again. Depends. I still have to do a Yamaha one. So mm-hmm. let's see. we still got to uh, test that. You know. All right. So other um, ones, uh, Scottio. Will Magic Beans work on the Dragon? Uh, I don't know what they allow uh, for you to adjust. If I don't you... think it's it's not a whole lot. It's not a okay. whole lot. I mean, Probably it's graphic. it's more than any kind of like soundbar, but it's not a whole lot. Probably graphic EQ. Maybe you reach out to Nakamichi and tell him, hey, yeah, we want some Magic Beans import on this thing. Yeah. Scottio right. wants to know is will yeah. an Omni mic with a calibration file work? Yeah. So we can load any. Text-based calibration mic profile. Any text-based calibration profile. Which yeah. is pretty much all of them, right? Oh, yeah, for the most part. Uh, Kyle, uh, the shilling has worked. Looking forward to trying out Magic Beans once the U-Mic and the Spatial Audio Toolkit get here. Thank Ta-da! You, uh, wanna, this- you guys want to know the secret for, you know, about shilling? I'll, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. Do it. The secret is not even saying something like, extremely good about it right although that's one aspect but just the fact that you're talking about it right the fact that you're talking about it that already is promotion and that's kind of why i don't really want to do videos on stuff that really sucks because if i talk about this thing that really sucks for 10 15 minutes people will still buy it because because i'm talking about it (laughs) that is my reasoning so that to me that's what what it is the fact that we're spending time talking about magic beans this is a shilling right yeah so uh okay i kind of answered this one joe how would i handle yeah, dual subs with magic beans i answered that um let's see mike jerome says can you use the global export on the pro version and just put in export custom bands and q factor in rew uh, I don't know why you'd need to do that because we export. We export already, you know, directly to PEQ. So yeah. you don't need to take an extra step. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be adding an extra step, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, what about EmoQ, which has more PEQ bands for the fronts? So sur- yeah, so that's one use case for this custom PEQ is you would just set it for uh, the set parameter. It, export it and then reset it for the other ones that don't have as many. Is that is that how you have yeah it? we do have a an export for emotiva. Um yep. we had to make an adjustment to it because the file names weren't correct. But uh yeah we have an export that you can just directly import and they have the correct parameters already. So yeah. 
What else? Uh, I like Grave Dangers here. This channel is too technical for my needs. Uh, for the time being, I'll start budgeting for a theater in four years when my house paid off. Uh, mm. Who knows what the field will change by then? Yeah, 100%. And you know what? It's good, Grave Danger, that you have that self-awareness. You're like, ah, this is, I don't know what these guys are talking about. Cool. Cool. We love having you here mm -hmm. in the chat. Just hang around, so, yeah. man. We talk about dumb stuff. We I don't mean, have to be technical. I mean, <laughs> like you, you should see me and Aaron in the chat. Like, Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. It's all just it's been a while. You know what? Right. We need to get... We need to get Michael back so y'all can talk about finance stuff and so Joe and I can just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> those are the best. Those were the best. Oh, man, I those yeah. Oh, those are funny. fun. Those are fun. Uh, Caesar says, uh, why can Chana do spectacular space? Oh, spectacular spatial mixes that studios with big budgets just can't. Uh, Chana, are you the Wizard of Atmos? Well, first of all, I appreciate the kind words, man. New name, new name. I, I, I would not say Atmos. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that I'm an expert on it. I just, uh, you know, I've been producing music since 2005. I'm a creative dude. And I just, I hear music in different ways, you know. And uh, and if you watch my other video um, about the Dolby Atmos Circus, then uh, just Google Dolby Atmos Circus Techno Dad and you'll or YouTube it. You'll figure it out. Uh, I you know I mix songs that lend themselves to you know sounding cool. That's it. That's all. It's you know and and if you think about if you watch that video, you'll notice like all these people that are mixing um, for spatial. They're doing catalog work from music that's been around for decades, and so you don't want that stuff flying around. You know, like it doesn't make any sense. Um, I'll let you guys in on a little little secret here. Not a secret. Yeah, that one. How do you like your Dolby Atmos experience? Subdued or Circus? That one. 11 days. Wow. It's a long time ago. It seems like I was gone for a little bit. I don't know uh, yep. what happened there. Um, I am actually going to be involved in something really cool next week. It will be a live Dolby Atmos mixing event with um uh with my man rock from from that video uh who does the spatial mixes for rihanna and uh a lot of like triple a um, artists so that's gonna be cool so listen up for i we don't, we're still literally working out the details this thing's supposed to happen april 3rd so i might have to go to cincinnati uh next tuesday to do the event um and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be on somebody else's YouTube channel. Maybe we'll have it on my channel, live streamed as well. But they have a way to send it via 7.1.4, Joe. Whoa. Might not be for, it might not be for everybody, but uh, this is some new stuff. So, you know, I like that. What did I say? What, I, what, what, did, what do we call this? The Doing Cool Shit Podcast? Yeah. It's doing it. Awesome Shit Podcast. Like, I, I don't know what That's else. It? You know, like who else is doing kind of just kind of just kind of stuff? You know, I think with the three of us, we're like the fucking musketeers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, to answer your question, uh, Caesar, uh, it's uh, there's they don't have they they also might not have a big budget. Okay, just think about it. Uh, the spatial mix is like the last thing on their on their mind. They want to. They want to get their touring out. They want to get the merch out. They want to get. If you're talking about a big label artist, they have all these other deadlines they got to hit. They're like, yeah, spatial mix. Give them, give them two days to do the album. Like literally, that's what Rocks told me. He's like, yeah, they called me up on Wednesday and said we needed it yesterday. And so he does an all nighter in his fabulous studio. My God, that studio is awesome. Eleven point four point six. Holy shit. PMC yeah. speakers. God, it's gonna be millions of dollars in there. Um, lucky dude. And it's in Santa Monica, so it's like. It's just not, it's not cheap over there. Anyway, that's probably it. Okay. I'm done. Uh, somebody's asking about pricing. So the pricing the is... Meta? Uh, no, we, for <laughs> Magic Beat, it's $249 for the standard version. The pro version is $399. If you were part... Well, you can sign up for the early access, and it'll be 50 bucks off for anybody who's on that list. We'll email you, and on the 19th, you'll be able to buy it at the discounted rate, or you can wait and pay the full price if you'd like. I don't mind either way, but uh, yeah. Don't do uh, that. Don't wait. Get in now. Yeah. Uh, somebody else asked, um, somebody said, 
that you know he wants to wait till he hears from others and that's a good idea you know oh here benji gator says i definitely super excited about magic beans but i'm not gonna lie i'm going to wait until the unbiased reviews first before i make a purchasing decision um Dude. you know what i'll do is i'll link to our discord group right our discord i i can't control everybody right so you can ask somebody there what is your opinion does this thing suck what what's the deal and you should be able to get a uh, get, get, get as much information as you can. Like, are these people using the same AVR as you? It's like, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, just ask them. They'll tell you. I'll, I'll They'll let you it. know. And I, you know, I've been saying it since the beginning because I, I already, you know, you will inherently get a better experience because you now have a target curve that's based on your room and your equipment. That's it. The the Very only simple. thing, uh, Reverend Slim said is something interesting. Is there really any? Is there really such thing as an unbiased review? Oh, because you got to keep in mind. So here's some bias, right? Shots fired. These people have purchased it, right? So that that is some bias. You've spent your own money, and now you feel like this thing should work. You know, I spent the time. I I measured all the speakers, so that is bias, right? Maybe the only unbiased thing might be that, you know, a measurement, an actual. Mm. Yeah. So let me post this here. So this is a link to the Discord group, and you can ask somebody there. You know what you think about it. It's not a very nice. You you can click on the link. <laughs> click on the link. What's that? A bunch of ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah. Ask any questions. You know, and if it's not for you, then. I would hope that somebody would say, eh, maybe not for your case, you know? Maybe you can save yourself the money and just use the default, you know? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. All right. Let's see. LLL. LL space L. As audio enthusiasts, I would love to see the results of a hearing test from each of you using something like a Mimi hearing test app. I'm a drummer and never knew I had a moderate hearing loss at 2K. Wow. And that's yeah. it, like... That's it, like the piercing, like yeah. great. Hey, hey, yeah. Dude, you, you got that two K dip. You got that two K dip, player. <laughs> it's like built in. It's like, oh, these speakers are great. Yeah, I think my mine are, mine is probably. I think I I did some kind of test and it was like good to like 16 K, which is I think is pretty good for my age. But I also try not to listen to stuff too loud. I clean my ears. All you people out there, clean your ears, man. Like, don't use, don't yeah, use cheap tips. Right? Use a little scoop. There's like a little scoop. And, you know, I have one of those things that with a little camera on it. I swear to you, this is no joke. I have a little thing where there's a camera and you can see and like clean your ears, like basic stuff, and don't listen yeah. to stuff too loud. That's it. Yeah. yeah, clean behind the ear too. Behind the ear. Yeah. But yeah, I think my hearing's pretty legit down uh, up to. 16k but you know what always worries me do you guys ever hear that like ringing yeah i don't know which yeah i don't know you don't know which one that everyone yeah every once in a while it just come mm -hmm. on I, I was told a long time ago that that means you lost that frequency yes that's what it is <laughs> I, I hear the same frequency i don't know every single time <laughs> well i mean maybe it's like one point sure? maybe, maybe it's, it's like, like one hundred. yeah maybe it's 1230 hertz and the next one is 1240 hertz oh yeah, i don't so know they're, they're still fairly close together you I, know, but I they are different something similar where it's they said that like it's one of the hairs dying okay you know what i mean like there's yeah. like little, what I'm you like, talking about willis like i'm out of here i'm out of here <laughs> uh, I just to, um to derek derek uh uh williston right before the show i'm out oh, of yeah. here who derek who uh, I don't know. What does he go by now? Williston. Williston uh, Audio Lab. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. He used to go by Big D Wiz. Big D oh, Wiz, Big D Wiz. Yeah. Big D Wiz. Big, D Wiz. Big Dermot. Dummy. Dermot. Big Dummy. Dermot. Yeah, Big Dummot. Dummy. I love that. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, I'd be, I'd be curious to see. I know, I know for me, it's like 16 or 17K. Last time yeah, I checked. I don't, I don't know. Ago. Last time I found out, or last time I had an audiologist do any testing for me, it was like 20. 15 or 16. 
Nah, come on. People are watching. You got to say something super high. You know what I mean? Otherwise, they won't trust you. Oh, no. 40, oh, 40,000. 40,000. 40,000. Yeah. 40, I can't. You used to be 30, but now I'm only – I'm down to 22 right now, 22K. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's DSD. So with certain <laughs> DSD music, I can hear out the 42K. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, DSD. Yeah. If we're talking a total different ball game. I'm yeah. up at like 50K. You, yeah, exactly. you know, sometimes that Nyquist, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The aliasing, oh man, the aliasing of oh, it's just rough. <laughs> oh god, the inner oh, ear thing. Too know. much, too much <laughs> inner ear thing. Oh, all right, all right. What else? Look, let's get uh, going. Yeah, let's get going. Uh, I have four monolith THX small Atmos speakers now, looking to improve the bed layer. Did I not have my? Oh, there we go. I didn't have my big bottom on until now. Oh no, giddy up. Welcome. Oh, terrible, man. Daily Hi-Fi podcast. Yeah, I know okay. that too. I could tell because of my ears. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could hear all the way down. And why did you say something this entire hour and a half? Because I'm a nice guy, you know? You don't want to embarrass liar. you. You're supposed to liar. Liar. <laughs> um, Looking to improve the bed layer. My fronts, front, fronts and center. Do you think the Kef Q-Series would be a good match? Four monolith THX small Atmo speakers. Are those all the ones we have? Yeah. The so... Model? Aaron, you've measured the CAF Q150? Yeah. Okay. Are those, do they measure better than the Monolith THX Compact Satellite? You've measured both? I mean, he's, he's asking if they're a good match. It's not like one's better. For, um, for the, he for the wants to improve. Center. He wants to improve, so I'm assuming he's replacing. No? Well, I think the uh, CAF would probably oh, get see. lower, right? That would be the one thing. I want to say that the uh, the Monolith were actually a little bit more linear, except for there's like that dip. Dip, yeah. Around like one to two K, which we think is intentional, mm. potentially intentional for Atmos or something I mean, like that. Maybe I would go with the mono price. You're using too many speakers at this point. You don't even it's remember your own review. <laughs> well, he he's already admitted this. I know. Go to the website. Take a look no, at uh, he's the a website. charlatan. Charlatan. <laughs> see, what, see what you I like. I believe um, that the monolith is more linear, lower sensitivity, um, but it has a higher F3, and so it rolls off center. That'd awesome. be your trade off. Okay, I got uh, to, would not push the monolith like I would feel comfortable pushing maybe the Q150 for sure. Okay. But if you're using a subwoofer and it's maybe a smaller room, then you could go with the monolith. You know, so I like yeah. that monolith P6 C6 combo. I think if you're, I don't know what you're trying to upgrade from, but I hey, that it. that was my test for this Wim amp. Wim amp. Wim. I don't know, man. Wim. Uh, Just do what I do. I, say it both ways and then tell Wim, people. Wim, Wim. And so I tested them with these THX compact satellite because they're so inefficient. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. But like, I wanted to know. And I cranked this up to a point where I'm happy with how loud it is in my bedroom. My bedroom is pretty large, so I don't know. But um, you know what I noticed is with music, it's loud enough, right? I have a SVS 3000 micro and like, it's loud enough. I'm 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 okay. I don't need it yeah. to really go much louder. The problem is because it's HDMI. Now, when you start talking about like Disney Plus, Netflix, and you know, did you notice like the volume is much lower on those? Like a lot lower. You know, I don't. Yeah, I've never noticed that. I, I've I've never noticed it because I'm not been limited. So if if it was lower, I'll probably just turn it up. Right. Okay. So typically those are lower in volume you'll notice too because like if you hop over from netflix to youtube sometimes you're like whoa turn it down um so anyway that's where you start having an issue because like it's comfortable for music but if you go onto a streaming service where it's a really low volume now like i need to turn it i'm on max right now yeah and i need to turn it up louder so hopefully they address that i think i think it has something to do with like they want to leave a little bit of headroom because they have EQ, so I think that they leave a little bit there. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Hey, uh, somebody said the Discord link didn't work for them. The Discord hmm. link didn't work for them? You guys are amateurs, man. Hmm. Amateurs. That's somebody in the chat, Aaron. Relax, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Every time I go to the doctor, he always removes a ton of earwax from my ears. I need to get that done for real. You don't... Uh. That no, be dude, new. because it helps. No, it helps like block out like the ultra high frequencies. Because listen, man, otherwise, if I get my ears cleaned out, it's like Superman. I hear everything and I don't want to hear what people are thinking about. It just is too much, you know? So I use the earwax. It's like 
it's like a uh, a low pass filter, right? Like it lets everything oh, below two right. kilohertz get into my ear, and above mm. that, it's like I can't because people's thoughts radiate from their brains. I think it's like five point two gigahertz or something like that. I think is the mm -hmm. is the frequency. So you just you know you really got to block that out if you want to, or you can get like a class D like a filter, and you can mm. and remove that extra noise, that spurious noise from that switching, you know, that goes on because people's brains switch a lot too. Like I was next to a dude on the train with ADHD and it was insane. It was like every thought he has, I felt like I was going into convulsions. So I told my doctor, I was like, dude, just leave the earwax in there and then I can measure with my ears other some other time, you know. Well, you sometimes you gotta just use um like no, use no, different no, wax, right? So like stop. you gotta Is use that like on a wax. snowboard, we put different wax on it once yeah. a year. Yeah, you, we you hear like you, you, right? edging, BMX you, heard tube, you heard a tube rolling, and then now there's like there's op app. Op amp rolling. Op amp rolling, yeah. And then you can also install different, like, you know, just different forms of wax in there yeah. to adjust. You know, you can yeah. make adjustments uh, based on make your, your own target curve in your ear canal. So, yeah, yeah, and it's a cool thing. Like, if you mix it, like, you know how it is when you're trying to like build like absorption in your room and stuff. Like, if you go with like different materials and things like that, and you use magic ear wax. Yeah, yeah so like product. I'll use like other people's earwax. I'm like, yo, are you using that? I can see it hanging out your ear. Hold on, let me get that. And I'll, and I'll pack my ear with theirs, you know, and I'll play around with different ear earwax filters. Dang. Pretty good. I mean, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Magic see, wax. Magic wax. No. Magic no. wax. Magic wax. Um, we do it. Keep that on the low. That's a future module that we're working on. So. <laughs> That's yep. Great, dude. We gotta get going. We gotta get going. going. You guys. You guys uh, out there, you know we're joking and we just like to have fun. And I yeah, think that for real, don't, don't take other people's earwax. Don't, do, don't that. do that. It's not good for you, especially if you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> why, why on earth would you want to do that? Why would you know. even take it? Why would you go to the first step of taking it from somebody's ear? You're like, why would you eat it? <laughs> Listen, I don't, know what, kind of, I don't know what kind of crazy shit you, uh, you're, you're up to over there in Alabama. I'm gonna see you in three weeks, bro. <laughs> I can't wait, man. Coming at you. Give me yeah. that earwax. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make sure to store some up. Okay. <laughs> you will when you start flying. You know you will. It'll be good. Be oh, good this is gonna be great. All right, all right. Is there mm -hmm. uh wax on? Man. I like wax it. on, wax off. I think that's it. Yeah, man. that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, the one true thing though is clean your ears, don't use a q tip. You know, I don't know if you have to use that that liquid stuff, but keeping your ears clean is probably a good idea, right? Don't use yeah. Q-tips. Don't use Q-tips because you just push the wax in. Don't do that. A little, little scoop. We want to get the wax Please away from the eardrum. Yes. Very good. Anyway. All right. Thank you, thank you guys for hanging out with us. I don't know how we got to here. Uh, this is the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. We do this every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to join the crew and support the channel, go to crew.dailyhifi.com. And, of course, if you want to buy some merch, you can support us that way as well. Go to shop.dailyhifi.com. And if you don't want to see me eat or see us laugh and have a good old time and want to just listen to the podcast, you can go to anchor.fm slash dailyhifi to get the audio only version of the um podcast and don't don't and if you want to give joe a call here's his phone number okay <laughs> um, <laughs> do it <laughs> oh i can't believe that thing's still there anyway uh don't forget to uh become a patron of uh, aaron's audio corner oh yeah does, do that too he does all kinds of cool stuff and then there's also the magic beans audio.com and then the spatial toolkit where's the no <laughs> We never announced that product. <laughs> Go to spatialcd.com to get to get, to get our spatial toolkit. I tell you, we're just we're just, just to edit that. crashing and burning. Okay. Today. Yeah. Uh, there, okay. Earwax. <laughs> There's a link for earwax. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. For those That's of awesome. you that are part of the Daily Hi-Fi crew, we will see you in the after show in just a few seconds. For those of you watching on the replay or not part of the crew, we will see you next week. Have a good one. Peace. Bye-bye. I can hit